Hey guys, what's going on? Back with another educational video and this week we're talking about diet breaks. Now, one of the questions we've been getting a lot from our app, Carbon Diet Coach, for those of you who aren't familiar, Carbon Diet Coach is an app that basically does uh, customized nutrition recommendations based on your individual metabolism and goals. One of the most common questions we get in the uh, forum or the Facebook group that we have is will the app do diet breaks for me and when should I take a diet break? So just for the first question for members who are watching, the app doesn't do automatic diet breaks. It doesn't tell you when to take a diet break only because there are no established best practices for diet breaks. So I'm gonna give you my opinion on when I think you should take a diet break. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with diet breaks, diet breaks are periods typically over a week of eating at maintenance or above. Typically, when we talk about diet breaks, most people are talking about eating at maintenance calories. So the idea is you're not gonna gain weight, at least in terms of body fat. Now, when you increase your food intake, the scale will likely go up just because you're eating more food, you've got more glycogen, more water, and more uh, food just in your GI. So it's likely your weight will increase a little bit, but it's not from body fat. Why would you do something like this? Well. A few years ago, there was a study called the Matador study where they took obese people and they had them diet for a total, a total caloric restriction of 16 weeks. And they had one group do 16 weeks straight through and they had another group do uh, a total of 30 weeks. They did 16 weeks of calorie restriction, but for every two weeks of calorie restriction, they, did, they then did two weeks at maintenance. And they found some really impressive results. So first off, the group that was doing diet breaks retained more lean body mass, they lost a greater proportion of body fat, and they actually, after it was all over and they went back to kind of free living, they kept off more body fat than the group that was just dieting straight through. They also had less slowing of their endogenous metabolic rate or their BMR. They did provide all the food to the subjects over the entire study period, which I think was almost a year on the, on the long term. That's really impressive. Now, does that mean everyone should do two weeks of dieting followed by two weeks of diet breaks? No. What the research suggests is that if you are obese or more overweight, you can get away with less frequent diet breaks. Whereas as you get leaner and leaner, it's probably better to have more and more frequent diet breaks. Now, why would this be? When you're leaner, your leptin is lower, you have a, you're, and you're also more likely to lose lean body mass. A lot of people think when you're fat that you're gonna lose more lean body mass than when you're lean, but that's not true at all. As your body fat stores shrink and you have a greater ratio of, much greater ratio of lean body mass to body fat, the body is gonna be more likely to get some of that energy from lean body mass. Whereas when you are very overweight or obese, you have such a large reservoir of body fat your body is less likely to draw on lean tissue uh, to create energy. So in that perspective, what I typically recommend is if you are somebody who's obese or really overweight, you probably can get away for a decent period of time without a diet break. I would say like for every month or two, maybe do uh, one or two weeks of diet break. As you get more towards a normal body fat range, I like a two to one ratio of diet to diet break. Now, I don't have any empirical evidence to back this up. This is just kind of what I found to work pretty well for clients. Then as you get from normal to very lean or shredded, I like to move more towards almost a one-to-one -one ratio of diet to diet break, whether that's one week diet, one week break, or two weeks diet, two week break, you can kind of do what you want. The physiological benefits of diet breaks are great, but I think the psychological benefits are even more important. Dieting can be a real grind, especially if you're trying to get very lean or you're doing it for a long period of time, or if you have a ton of weight to lose. So if you're somebody, for example, and you've got over 100 pounds to lose, that's gonna take you a long time, especially if you're doing it right. So breaking that up with periods at maintenance for example, if you had 100 pounds to lose, maybe you could lose 20 pounds, 10, 20 pounds, then take a couple weeks diet break to give yourself a refresher, eat some more calories, feel better, and then re-enter back into dieting. Now, how to do the diet break? This is really important. You cannot look at a diet break as a break from dieting. If you stop tracking, if you just eat like a all those sorts of things, that's not eating at maintenance. Maintenance calories doesn't mean whatever the hell you want. Maintenance calories is still controlled amounts of calories. You should still be practicing good dietary behaviors, meaning eating a higher protein, plenty of fiber, 
micronutrients, and now with maintenance, you have a little bit of extra flexibility to maybe incorporate some treats, but only as they fit within your uh, caloric budget. So that's very important to keep in mind. A lot of people make the mistake of when they go to a diet break, they completely change their diet to all calorie dense foods, and then it takes them a while to get back into the swing of things when they go back to dieting. You don't wanna do that. You wanna keep those good behaviors for the most part with a little bit of increased flexibility. And this brings me to my last point, Diet breaks can be great for life events. So for example, I'm in a diet break this week. I've been dropping down from 230 pounds. Right now I'm about 209 pounds and uh, I'm taking a diet break this week as I'm on my way down to 205 pounds for the 205 pound uh, weight class for the USAPL. So I'm taking the diet break because my parents are in town. It was my son's birthday party on Saturday and we're having a 4th of July party this coming Saturday. So I'm taking a week long diet break to coincide with that because one, it's been three weeks of dieting since my last diet break. And two, because this just fits really nicely in my schedule and gives me some increased flexibility for this week to enjoy it a little bit more. That's kind of how I incorporate diet breaks. For those of you who use Carbon Diet Coach, once you've got to the point where you wanna take a diet break, just go into the settings, then to the coach settings, and then change your goal to maintenance for however long that you want to employ the diet break, whether it be a week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is. Then when you're ready to get back to fat loss, just go back into the same setting and change it over to fat loss again. I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. I'll put the link to the Mandor study in the description so you can read it for yourself and I hope you guys have a great week.